So, Assalamualaikum and good morning. So, we are from group 3, ECH 3120. We are going to present on topic 13.7 and 14.3. So, for 13.7, equilibrium conversion for single reactions. Suppose a single reaction occurs in homogeneous system. And suppose the equilibrium constant is known. The calculation of the phase composition at equilibrium is straightforward. If the phase is assumed an ideal gas, we have to use equation 13.28. Or an ideal solution, we have to use equation 13.27. Or if the equilibrium mixture is an ideal solution, we have to use equation 13.33. At equilibrium, there can be no tendency for change to occur, either by mass transfer, between phase, or by chemical reaction. So I will show you an example on 13.5. There is a water gas shift reaction. This is the chemical reaction equation. Uh, CO in gas state plus H2O in gas state produce CO2 in gas state plus H2 in gas state. So, we are, this question asks uh, us uh, to calculate the fraction of steam we add in each case, which means we have to determine the dire direction coordinate of epsilon. So for A, the reactant consists of one mole of H2O and one mole of CO. The temperature is 1100 Kelvin and the pressure is one bar. And for the solution for 13.5A, where the reactant consists of one mole of H2O and one mole of CO, and the temperature is at 1100 Kelvin, and the pressure is one bar. First, we need to refer figure 13.2, to which is on page 493, and we need to determine what is the value at y axis by finding. 10 to the power of 4 divided by T equals to 9.05. So we look at the value at axis at 9.05 and then we read the reaction line of CO plus H2O produce CO2 plus H2 and look at the value of the y axis. So when we look at the y axis, ln K is equal to 0. Therefore, k is equals to 1. For this reaction, V summation for each species we get is 0. Because the reaction is mixture and ideal gas, we have to use equation 13.28. So, this equation will be come like this. So, when negative V is equal to negative 0, Everything to the power of the negative zero will be one. Therefore, we get k is equal to one. Then, we need to find more fraction for each species by using equation 13.5. So, for YCO, one and I note is one. because of the CO and negative 1 because it's written times reaction coordinate divided by N0 is 2 which is come from CO and 1 from H2O and V is 0 and times Reaction coordinate. And after that, we get this. So we have to do this for the same thing for each species. And we get like this, this, and this. After that, we substitute of this value into equation give, equation A give, and we get E epsilon is 0 0.5. Therefore, the fraction of the steam that we add is 0 0.5. Hi everyone, my name is Iman Zulika and my metric number is 198421. So I will continue the presentation on reactions in heterogeneous system. 
So what is heterogeneous system? Heterogeneous system is chemical reaction in which the reactants are components of two or more phases, such as solid and gas, solid and liquid, or two immiscible liquids. In heterogeneous system, one or more reactants undergo chemical change at an interface. For example, on the surface of a solid catalyst. Okay, so this is the chemical reaction equation, which is A in gas state plus B in liquid state will produce C in aqueous state. So this is the equilibrium constant or it is known as equation 13.25. It is used to solve uh, problems in heterogeneous system. So by using this uh, equation, we can derive a lot more equations and we can solve uh, problems related to heterogeneous system. So this is the procedure to solve uh, the equation based on this equation. So first, uh, you assume the value and calculate by using equation K and then determine the Y value of both from data in the reference cited and then calculate uh, y for uh, the c using equation m and then calculate k by using equation l and compare the value determined from standard reaction data and if the two values agree, it means that the assumed value is correct. But if they do not agree, we need to assume a new value and repeat the procedure until both of the value agree. So next, I will explain about the example of heterogeneous system in food processing industry. So first, there's hydrolysis of lipids to fatty acid by lipase. So lipids can be in continuous or dispersed phase. So we use water-soluble lipase as the catalyst, which uh, then will absorb at oil to water or water to oil interface. And then hydrogenation of vegetable oil. For hydrogenation, we use active metals such as nickel, palladium, copper, platinum, and cobalt. But nickel is the most common one. So the purpose of using active metals is for reducing trans fatty acid content. So the advantages of hydrogenation of vegetable oil is that it can control the final consistency of the product. Poor hydrogenation convert the vegetable oils into fully saturated fat. Partially hydrogenated, partially hydrogenated vegetable oils are partially saturated. Uh, for example, margarine and shortening. It is partially hydrogenated as it appears as solid form in room temperature. And lastly is isomerization of glucose to fructose. So in isomerization, we use heterogeneous base catalyst, uh, such as API, TMG, and TBD. So the advantage of using heterogeneous base catalyst in isomerization is that it can be separated and recycled through filtration or centrifugation. And it is an effective glucose isomerization catalyst. But this, 
disadvantage of using heterogeneous based catalyst the accumulated byproducts affect the reusability of the heterogeneous based catalyst which means it cannot be used for too many times so that's all from me thank you and i will pass the presentation to the next presenter Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and I be to Dr. Farah. So my name is Muhammad Farah Mifisan, my membership number is 198998. I'm from group 3 and I will explain on equilibrium and stability and I will explain for the first part and the second part will cover by my group mate. So let us start. So <clears throat> consider a closed system containing a number of species and arbitrary number of phases and they are initially in non-equilibrium. So, which means that non equilibrium state with respect to mass transfer between phases and chemical reaction. In this, in this uh, system, the change which occur in the system are necessarily uh, irreversible and they take a system ever closer to an equilibrium state. So next, we try to imagine that this system are placed in a surrounding that mechanical and the thermal are in the equilibrium state. So heat exchange and expansion work are then accomplished reversibly. So under these circumstances, the entropy change of the surrounding, the entropy change of the surrounding, okay, this entropy change of the surrounding are like this is this equation. So the change of entropy surrounding equal to change of heat transfer of surrounding over temperature of the surrounding equal to negative change of heat transfer over change of I don't know, no change, only the temperature. So the final term applies to the system for which the heat transfer dq has a negative sign on it to that of the, the change of heat transfer surrounding and the temperature of the system are replaced with the and, and the temperature of the surrounding are replaced with the temperature because both might have this value for reversible heat transfer for <clears throat> for the second law requires that change of entropy plus change of entropy in the surrounding must, must be bigger or equal to zero after the arrangement of this second law, and we get this equation, which is the change of heat transfer must be less or equal to temperature time. Uh, I can see that uh, change in entropy. So after the arrangement, this we call uh, as uh, equation number three. We apply the first law, and then we get this. This is for equation number four, and then we combine with the equation number three and number four we get this general equation. So because the relation involves properties only, it must be satisfied for change in state for any closed system of uniform temperature and pressure without restriction to the condition of mechanical and thermal reversibility assumed in each derivation. So uh, the equality holds for change between equilibrium state reversible process. Thus equation 6.1, uh, in the chapter 6 and it's just a special case for this equation. So equation 6.1 which is in the chapter 6 uh, just a special case for this equation. So this equation are too general so <clears throat> it uh, difficult for we to apply in a practical. Uh, for example by inspection uh, for this uh, equation and this equation. So when we want to apply this uh, equation number five, this equation number five to this equation, uh, it have a difficult difficulties lah. Okay, and then we proceed with the next part, which is if the system are in an isolated system, isolated system, which means that it has a constant temperature and constant pressure. So this equation, this general equation can be written like this. Yeah, I will proceed with the next uh, part, which is the definition of Gibbs energy, GT. Uh -huh. And therefore, the change of Gibbs energy in the constant temperature and pressure must be less or equal to zero. So, of the possible specialization of equation, this equation, general equation. This is most useful because T and P, which are easily measured and controlled, are more logical as constant than uh, other pairs of variables such as 
internal energy and specific volume. Equation 14, I don't know. Equation, uh, this equation, this energy equation, indicates that all irreversible process occurring at constant temperature and constant pressure proceed in such direction as to cause a decrease in Gibbs energy of the system. Therefore, the equilibrium state of a closed system is that state for which the total Gibbs energy is a minimum with respect to all possible change at the given T and P. So that's all from my part. I will pass to the next presenter, Hakim. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and wishing everyone is well. So my name is Mawad Hakim. My matrix number is 195844. So I'm going to uh, continue the presentation about the equilibrium and stability. So the equilibrium states of a closed system is uh, that state for which the total Gibbs energy is uh, minimum with respect to all possible changes at a given temperature and pressure. So here we have the two equation here. So this equation of 14.67 uh, states that differential of G at a constant temperature and pressure is less than equal to zero. So it should, it's actually so provides a criterion must be satisfied by any single case uh, that is stable with, with respect to the, to the alternative that it splits into two cases. And it requires that the Gibbs energy of an equilibrium state uh, be the minimum value uh, with respect to all possible changes at the given temperature and pressure. So thus, when mixing of two liquids occurs at constant T and P, uh, the total Gibbs energy must decrease because the mixed state must be the one of lower Gibbs energy with respect to the unmixed state. As a result, um, Gibbs minus with summation of given Gibbs and X at a constant temperature and pressure must be less than zero. So here, this is the next equation, which is the differential of Gibbs at constant temperature and pressure must be equal to zero. So to apply this equation, so one develops this equation of differential Gibbs as a function of the mole numbers and set it equal to zero. So the resulting equation, along with those representing the conservation of mass, provide our working equations for the solution of equilibrium problems. So the equation links directly to the phase equilibrium and it is applied to chemical reaction equilibrium. So here we have the figure. This figure is actually explained about the Gibbs energy change of mixing. So we have two curves here, so the curve one and curve two. So the curve one is actually the completely, uh, completely miscibility. And the curve two is the two phases between alpha and beta. So here, uh, the situation here is there is a, Two points, which is the two points of alpha and also the beta. Uh, the straight line, the straight edge line connecting points alpha and beta uh, represent the Gibbs that would obtain for the range cons for the range of states consisting of two phases of composition of x1 alpha and x1 beta in various proportions. So thus the solid curve shown between points alpha and beta cannot represent stable phases with respect or with respect to phase splitting. So the equilibrium states between alpha and beta consists of two phases. So this consideration actually leads to the following criterion uh, of stability for a single phase binary system for which uh, changes of Gibbs here is equal to the Gibbs minus with the products of Gibbs 1 x1 minus with the products of Gibbs 2 x2. So at constant temperature and pressure, a change of Gibbs and its first and second derivative must be continuous function of X, and the second derivative must everywhere be positive. Here is the second derivative. So as we can see, the second derivative of change of Gibbs of X at constant temperature and pressure must be equal to zero. So in which uh, the second derivatives of change of Gibbs of RT of X at constant temperature and pressure must be greater than zero or must be always positive. So this is the equation for 14.69. So here, <coughs> uh, this uh, requirement has a number of consequences. So equation, uh, so this equation uh, rearranged and written for a binary system. So becomes a change of Gibbs of RT is equal to x1 non x1 plus with the x2 non x2 plus Gibbs free energy of RT. So from which derivatives of change of Gibbs of RT of X1 is equal to ln X1 minus with ln X2 plus a derivative of Gibbs free energy of RT of X. And second derivative of changes of Gibbs of RT 
of x uh, is equal to 1 over product of x1, x2, plus second derivative, so I'll get free energy over RT of x, and it's equivalent to equation 14.69 here. The stability requires the, requires the second derivative of Gibbs free energy over RT of x uh, must be greater than negative 1 over product of x1 and x2 at constant temperature and pressure, which uh, produce the equation of 14.7. So I think uh, that's all from me. My presentation is going to be continued with uh, Amalai now. So that's all. Thank you. So I'm going very good day to all of you. So I'm going to continue hacking presentation. My name is Mama Mazenal. My metric number is 199892. So my presentation is about binary mixture of excess gives energy and its example. So first of all, we need to know what is the excess gives energy equation, which is which is G of RT equal to x1 ln gamma 1 plus x2 ln gamma 2. First, we need to differentiate this equation and it become this one. So as you know, uh, according to 12.7. This part of this equation is equal to zero. So thus, it will generate the equation, the, gener the equation will become dGE over RT over dx1 equal to ln gamma 1 negative ln gamma 2. So then we second differentiate again the equation will become d squared GE over R dx square over A equal to d ln gamma 1 over dx1 negative d ln gamma 2 over dx1 equal to 1 over x2 d ln 1 d ln gamma 1 over dx1. So the equation will combine with 14.7. So we only need this part of the equation and this part of the equation and we become d ln gamma 1 over dx1 more, more than negative 1 over x1. As you know x2, we are, there's no x2 inside here because x2 from the right side move to the left side and it will become x2 over x2 will become 1. So the another condition of stability is equivalent to equation 14.69 which ultimately derives the other stability character and follows directly. So you can see here this, these two are the equation. So we're going to put this equation in a number. So d ln y1 over dx1 more than negative 1 over x1 is known as 14.71. df1 over dx1 more than 0 is known as 14.72. d mu1 over dx1 more than 0 is 14.73. Now we go to the example. So the stability criteria apply to the particle phase, however, there's nothing to preclude this, their application to problem in phase equilibria. Where the phase of interest, example, a liquid mixture is the is equilibrium with another phase vapor mixture. Consider the binary isothermal vapor liquid equilibria at pressure low enough that the vapor phase may not be considered as either gas mixture. What are the implications of liquid phase stability that features isothermal P, X, Y diagram, such as those in figure? 10.8. So this is the PXY diagram in figure 10.8. So first of all, we're focusing on liquid phase only. We use 14.72 and apply to the species 1. We are going to get this equation because of F1 cannot be negative. So the equation will become D ln F1 over DX1 is more than 0. So the equation 14.72 also apply for the species 2 and DX2 is equal to negative DX1. So when they put F2, it will become lesser than 0. So we combine these two and we become F1 negative. F2 is more than 0. We constant temperature and pressure. As you can see, why it's negative? Because F2 is lesser than 0. So then we put F equal to YP and ideal gas mixture is F vapor equal to F liquid for VLP, DLE vapor liquid equilibrium. The left side of the equation A is d ln f1 over dx1 negative d ln f2 over dx1 so the right side will become 1 over y1 over y1 1, 1 over y1 y2 dy1 over dx1 so the equation a is produced the equation a will produce dy1 over dx1 is more than 0 this is known as equation b so the next part of the fugacity form of Gibbs, Gibbs and Dunham theory equation the equation 12.4 is applied again to the liquid phase. So the, the equation will become this one, x1 over d ln f1 over dx1 plus x2 d ln f2 dx1 equal to 0. Then we substitute f equal to yp. So f1 will be y1p and f2 will become y2p. Now this is the equation. Thus with the manipulation of equation b, it will produce an equation c. As you can see here, this one is equation c. P over dx1 is the same as y1 negative x1. 
plus by using simple mathematics with constant t, this equation will produce equation t which is dp over dy1 equal to dp dx over dx1 over dy over dx1. Thus, the stability requires imply the following VLE in binary system at constant t. dy1 over dx1 more than zero, as we know it was equation, it is equation b. dp over dx1, dp over dy1, and y1 negative x1 have the same sign. Add as result where y1 equal to x1, dp over dx1 is equal to zero, and dp over dy1 is equal to zero. Although derivation Although the derivation for now, although the derivation for condition of low pressure, those results are general validity as illustrated as by the VLE data shown in figure 10.8. Because of the low pressure, we can assume it they are in constant in constant pressure. So thank you. <laughs>